Stevie Lane 5 1, turn right, heading 180. 1 4 Papa, turn right 245, report localizer established. The Airbus A350 is today one of the go to aircraft for long haul operations worldwide. It has quickly established itself as a major player and Airbus is hoping that it will continue long into the future. They have been further making the A350s make its mark on the industry by releasing the A350-1000, A350-ULR and so on. These are other variants that are away from the base variant known as the A350-900, which while these other variants may not be as popular as the base one, are still very useful to the industry and airlines fitting more into niche sectors. So with that being said, what's the difference between the stock standard A350 and the A350 ULR? Beginning with the most obvious change, and that is the range. Being known as the ULR, or ultra long range, the A350 ULR has had an improved range over its standard A350-900, which makes it perfect for those select routes that maybe airlines hadn't ever thought of operating, or it was simply a pipe dream that looked likely never to happen. Thanks to the A350 ULR, Qantas is currently looking to move forward with their Project Sunrise flights, which would be non-stop services from the likes of Sydney to London, Melbourne to London, Sydney to New York, and services through to Brazil as well. On top of this, it has allowed Singapore Airlines to return to Newark on a non-stop flight from Changi that isn't utilising the now inefficient A340. This flight, though, currently sits at the longest passenger flight in the world. The range has been increased by a staggering 2,930 kilometres, or some 1,600 nautical miles, in comparison to the Dash 900. This has been done thanks to the fuel tank, which has seen naturally some minimal changes be made. Breathing rooms that were featured on the Dash 900's fuel tanks have disappeared, enabling more fuel to be carried. And I'll get into more later on how that's being made possible, as of course, added fuel is added weight on board the aircraft. The added fuel, though, does enable the aircraft to fly for longer periods of time overall, but also some smaller, more minute changes have also been made that you maybe don't notice on the surface, similar to the fuel tanks. That includes a stronger landing gear. Structurally, though, Airbus has looked towards the A350-1000's landing gear for inspiration. It isn't completely uncommon for aircraft manufacturers worldwide to look at other aircraft within their portfolio for inspiration. As the saying goes, don't fix something that's not broken. And often, aircraft, despite their size, can have elements that are useful for future aircraft or adaptations of existing ones. This is a simple example of it. Moving inside the aircraft, the A350 ULR has a lot less seats in comparison to that of the standard Airbus A350. Singapore Airlines is a great case study for this example, if you will. They have under 180 seats on the A350 ULR, which, if you have a look at a standard Airbus A350, is considerably less than what it usually would be. Their A350 ULRs also do not feature any type of economy class. This is something largely unheard of for a passenger experience within the aviation industry. When discussing travel and flying, economy simply goes hand in hand. But Singapore Airlines offers a largely premium cabin experience with premium economy seats essentially replacing those of economy. As stated by Airbus themselves, benefiting from the A350-900's unique flexibility, the extended range capability does not involve installation of additional fuel tanks, but rather an adaptation of the fuel system within the existing fuel tank. In addition, the A350-900 ULR can be reconfigured to the standard long-haul specifications of the A350-900 if required by the operator. Finally, the A350 ULR has a maximum takeoff that is 5 metric tons higher than that of the regular A350, and on top of that, it has a 19 metric ton lower cargo capacity, which in turn allows for that extra bit of fuel to be carried on board the aircraft that I briefly mentioned earlier in this video. It is complicated on the surface, but it ultimately does make a lot of sense. Those are the main differences between the A350 and the A350 ULR. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please do not hesitate to let me know. Please do continue to also stay safe and take care. I will see you next time.